G'day everyone, welcome back to the 39 Steps. Uh, when we were last here, we found our new American friend dead and we fled London for the Scottish Highlands. In this episode, Sanctuary of the Inn, we'll find out what happens to Richard Hannay next. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Sanctuary of the Inn. Sunday, 24th of May, 1914. Galloway, Scotland. It is a tiny bit of twain. Beautiful smoke effect. Marvelous. The occupants of the carriage were an old shepherd and his dog. A wall-eyed brute. I'm his dog. A wall-eyed brute, brute I mistrusted. The man was asleep, and on the cushions beside him was the morning Scotsman. A newspaper, no doubt. Oops. Ah, uh, the paper. Let's see if there's anything interesting. Mary Nolan underwear. Hmm. Not seeing anything there. Oh, Empire Day murder shocks London. Oh. Scotland Yard top officers have been called in to action following the brutal slaying of a decorated British officer in an affluent apartment block in London near Portland Place. The killing took place during the last weekend's Empire Day celebrations. Yet unnamed man was discovered in the first floor flat on Sunday morning Saturday morning by its valet Mr. Paddock. Intriguingly the victim was not in charge of the apartment and the owner was not to be found. Even more intriguing is the arrest of a local milkman found whistling in the hallway of the apartment. A mere five minutes away from Oxford Street. Mr. S Mr. Paddock sprang the alarm and had the young man arrested. Scotland Yard Commander? Hmm. Ooh. Well, there we go. Ooh. Missing airmen. Fear disaster. Mm. Oh, sorry, folks. Okay. So I'll let you read these yourself. King's portrait slashed with an axe. More news down here. Right. Parade. Mm. Latest news. Portland Place killer on the run. Thought to be travelling north. New twists and turns in the case of the Portland Place murder. The Scotland Yard releases its prime suspect and reveals that the true criminal has escaped the capital. But the Scotland Yard com Commissioner, Mr McGilvery, was unwilling to elaborate in on further details as to whom the murderer might be. We have reason to believe that the killer has left London by one of the northern lines. We no longer have reason to suspect that the milkman is a murderer or has any connection with the killing of Captain Theophilus Dilby. 
Mm, found dead at his feet. Captain Dilby was reported to have been on home leave and staying with a friend at the apartment near London's affluent Portman Place apartments. Chief Investigating Officer Mr. Scaife told the Times Nurse was a brutal thing or an honourable man. They urge anyone who may have seen or heard anything on the night of the 23rd of May to come forward and make yourself. <sighs> Come on, make yourself known. The owner of the apartment in question, oh, Richard Hannay, is still missing. Oh, there you go. Ooh, I can smell the alcohol on his breath. Mm. Oh. Okay, I think we've done everything there. Moving right along. We were approaching the station which I had got out yesterday. At which I'd got out yesterday. The potato digging station master had been gingered up into some activity while well, the West Going train was waiting to let us pass. From it descended three men who were asking him questions. Mm. Sitting well back in the shadow, I watched them carefully. Ooh. The moors. All the party looked out across the moor where the white road departed. I hoped they were going to take up my tracks there. Three men. I suppose that they were the local police who had been stirred up by Scotland Yard and had traced me as far as this one horse siding. One of them had a book and took down notes. The old potato digger seemed to have turned peevish. The child who had collected my ticket was talking volubly. Mm. Right. As we moved away from the station, the old shepherd began to stir. train traveling east towards Dumfries in Scotland oh, oh that's what comes of being a teetotaler <laughs> I expect express my surprise that in him I should have met a blue ribbon stalwart oh I am a strong teetotaler I took the pledge last Martin Miss and I haven't touched a drop of whiskey since I'm not even a hug my knee though I was so tempted oh, oh, oh that's what I get I heed better than hellfire and twine looking different ways for the Sabbath what did it? here I drink the core brandy being a teetotal, I keep it off the whiskey, but I was all I was nip nip no day this brandy and I doubt I'll no be wheel for a fun life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so alright, you can be uh you can not drink whiskey but drink brandy and be okay. My plan had been to get out at some station down the line, but the train suddenly gave me a better chance. I looked out and saw that every carriage window was closed and no human figure appeared in the landscape. Mm. Alright, let's leg it. So I dropped quickly from the carriage. 
and made a break for it. It would have been alright but for that infernal dog. I could not have made a more public departure if I had left with a burglar and a, with a bugler and a, bu and a brass band. Happily, the drunk shepherd provided a diversion. He and his dog, which was attached to a, ro uh, oh, which was attached by rope to his waist, suddenly cascaded out of the carriage. Had forgotten me. Beautiful. Perfect escape. I looked back, but there was nothing in the landscape. For the first time I felt the terror of the hunted on me. It was not the police that I thought of, but the other folk. He knew that I knew Scudder's secret and dared not let me live. I was certain that they would pursue me with a keenness and vigilance known to the British law, and that once their grip closed on me, I should find no mercy. The mood did not leave me until I had reached the rim of... M I reached the rim of mountain and flung myself, panting, on a high ridge above the young waters of the river. I have eyes like a hawk, but I can see nothing moving in the whole countryside. Then I looked into the blue May sky, and there I saw that which set my pulse racing. I was as certain as if I had been told that airplane was looking for me and it did not belong to the police. These heather hills were not were no sort of cover if my enemies were in the sky and I must find a different kind of sanctuary. Mm. I kept onwards. About six in the evening I came out of the moorland. Found a farmhouse, so we better approach with caution. Scottish moors. Ooh, a nice bridge. As when a griffin flew the wilderness with winged step. Again. As when a griffin flew the wilderness with winged step or hill and moody dale pursues the Aram man. Aram. The nice. A bridge over the Barry Burn. Peat smoke and savoury roast floated from the house. Good evening to you. It's a fine night for the road. Is that place an inn? At your service. I'm the landlord, sir. And I hope you will stay the night, for to tell you the truth, I've had no company for a week. Ah, very good. I pulled myself up on the parapet of the bridge and filled my pipe. I began to detect another. You're young to be an innkeeper. My father died a year ago, left me the business. I live there with my grandmother. It's a slow job for a young man. And it wasn't my choice of profession. Which was? I want to write books. <laughs> I 
And what better chance could you ask? Man, I've often thought that an innkeeper would make the best storyteller in the world. Oh, not now. M maybe in the old days when you had pilgrims and ballad makers and highwaymen and mail coaches on the road. But not now. Nothing comes here but motor cars full of fat women who stop for lunch and a fisherman or two in the spring and the shooting tenants in August. There's not much material to be got out of that. I want to see life, to travel the world and write things like Kipling and Conrad. But the most I've done yet is to get some verses printed in Chambers Journal. I looked at Ian standing golden in the sunset against I've the I've knocked a bit about the world and I wouldn't despise such a hermitage. Do you think that adventure is only found in the tropics or among gentry in red shirts? Maybe you're rubbing shoulders with it at this moment. That's what Kipling says. Brother romance and all unseen bromance brought up the 915. Um, yes. But here's a true tale for you then. And a month from now, you can make a novel out of it. Ooh. A story of epic proportions. Mr. Richard Haney was a successful mining magnate from Kimble here in Australia. Hmm. Then his luck changed and he ran into serious financial troubles. We're here for the money! I owe you nothing! Thugs chase Annie across the Kalahari to German Africa, pursuing him across the ocean. Uh, Kimberly's on the other side, but it's okay. No. He got away and fled to London. But they tracked him down. My hat! They had killed his friend. And were chasing Hannah yet. Nice version. You're looking for adventure? Well, you found it here. The devils are after me and the police are after them. It's a race that I mean to win. My God! It's all pure Ryder Haggard at Conan Doyle. You believe me? Of course I do. I believe everything out of the common. The only thing to distrust is the normal. He was very young, but he was the man for my money. I think they're off my track for the moment, but I must lie close for a couple of days. Can you take me in? He caught my elbow in his eagerness and drew me towards the house. As I entered the inn porch, I heard from afar the beat of an engine. He gave me a room at the back of the house, with a fine outlook over the plateau. I smoked in a chair till daylight, for I could not sleep. The next morning I wanted some, so, some time to myself, so I invented a job for him. He had a motor bicycle, and I sent him off next morning for the daily paper, which would usually arrive at the post in the late afternoon. I told him to keep his eyes skinned and make note of any strange figures he saw. 
keeping a sharp lookout for mo motors and aeroplanes. Then I sat down in real earnest to Scudder's notebook. Uh, newspaper. Mm. London police have reason to believe that the Portman Place murderer has travelled north into Scotland. Oh. Yes, the milkman's thrown us in. Uh, mm, this has something to do with it. Outrageous Royal Scottish Academy. Mm, the suffragettes. Mm. wonder what that's going to have to do with it. Uh, the Balkans. Mm. Carolides, the Greek premier. Ah, yes. Well, I'll s shall I scroll down that slowly so you can read it? No. Done. Oh, it's one of the, the landlord's poems. I was born in the land of Scotland, where the heather was turning brown. I grew in the hills of Scotland, then I wanted to leave my town. I'm bored in the land of Scotland. Please take me away. These desolate plains of Scotland are not where I wish to stay. Yeah, very good. Well, what the innkeeper saw. Cool. Dear Mr. Fraser, thank you for sending us your latest poem, A Frozen Heart in Sun. In some. In summer days, huh? We will be del delighted to publish your poem in the January issue of next year. We will return the manuscript once it has been copied and recorded. Uh, by recorded post. Yours sincerely, the editor. Nice. Yeah. I'll let you read that. All right. All right, sorry about that. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit of an issue. Ooh. A whole lot of newspapers. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, I glanced out the window. There seemed to be two of them, men in aquacutsum aqu aqu and tweed caps. Hmm. One, s one was slim, the other was sleek. That was the most I could make of my reconnaissance. Ten minutes later, the innkeeper slipped into the room, his eyes bright with excitement. There's two chaps below looking for you. They're in the dining room having whiskies and sodas. They asked about you and said they'd hoped to meet you here. Oh, and they described you jolly well. Stow to your boots and shirt. 
I told them you'd been here last night and gone off on a motor bicycle this morning. And one of the chaps swore like a navvy. Ah, very good. Made him tell me what they look like. One was one was a dark eyed thin fellow with bushy eyebrows. The other was always smiling and lisped in his talk. Neither was any kind of foreigner. On this my young friend was positive. I took a bit of paper and wrote words in German as if they were part of a letter. Take this down and say it was found in my bedroom and ask them to return it to me if they overtake me. Okay. Mm. Blackstone, Scudder had got onto this but he could not act for a fortnight. I doubt if I can do any good now, especially as Carolides is uncertain about his plans. But if Mr. T advises, well, he'll do the best, I. Your paper woke them up. The dark fellow witnessed White as death and cursed like blazes. And the fat one whistled and looked ugly. They paid for their drinks with half a sovereign and wouldn't wait for change. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Get on your bicycle and go off to Newton Stewart to the chief constable. Describe the two men and say you suspect them of having had something to do with the London murder. You can invent reasons. The two will come back, never fear. Not tonight, for they'll follow me 40 miles along the road, but first thing tomorrow morning, tell the police to be here bright and early. <laughs> he set off like a docile child while I worked at Scudder's Notes. Ha! I had a sudden inspiration. Ooh. Scudder had said Julia Zani was the key to Caroline's biddies, and it occurred to me to try it on his cipher. It worked. Five letters of Julia gave me the position of the vowels. Ah. In half an hour, I was reading with a white fa whitish face and fingers that drummed on the table. Oh, nice. That evening, we dined together. Out of common decency, I had to let him pump me for information. I gave him a lot of stuff about lion hunts and the Matabel War. Thinking that, thinking all the while, what tame business these were compared to what I was now engaged in. When he went to bed, again I sat up. I had finished Scudder's book. And, uh, yes, well, that is where we'll leave this episode. Um, pack of Lies. <laughs> huh. Having decoded Scudder's book, Hane now has all the facts. If only he can remain hidden until the second week of June. So, yes. I want to thank you all for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode of The 39 Steps, please remember to leave a like, thumbs up, all that good stuff. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of this and all the other awesome games, please subscribe and hit the notification icon. And comments, please feel free to leave comments. Your support is phenomenal. So yeah, thanks again for joining us. And until next time, later.